Hello everyone. This is a new project I'm working on. I got this mill about three weeks ago and it's I think it's in 1967. Variable speed Bridgeport. One and a half horse. And anyways I got it. Got it all four part or at least took this off, took the saddle off, took the knee off, took the oilers apart, flushed them, put them back together, got new meters, uh, couldn't get the ram to move, well I could get it to move, but the handle was already busted off on it, and that's when I remembered that way back in school we tried to move one and the handle busted off on it, and then I looked online and you, about, I don't know, three out of five of them that you see online for sale, the handle's busted off of it, so... They didn't make the handles quite big enough. So I actually used a half inch drive Paramount ratchet handle for this one. The gears are stripped out on it. So I just simply threaded it and threaded it for the for the for a ball handle and screwed it up in there. Anything different I did. The reason I decided to use a ratchet handle, I got thinking, I don't think I've ever busted a ratchet handle. I stripped the gears out, but never busted a ratchet handle. So I made it uh, half 20. This was 3816. I just simply took this bolt out and drilled and tapped it for half 20. And I was actually able to use this to free it up. Yeah, it's not breaking. But anyways, that's where we're at. New, new digital readout. It had an Accurate on it before. This is a 203. But uh, Y axis was, the readout was really dim and the linear scale was messed up I, I flipped them around and it wasn't the readout it was actually the scale because i could get x to work on y but well like i said y was dim but it kind of led me to believe that maybe uh probably blew a bunch of dirt in there because i got in there and tried to clean it but then i realized it was all scratched up the cover on the bottom here was missing that windshield wiper rubber type thing and the fellow that owned it before me loved to blow it off with the air haze because I I seen two or three of these tore apart on one line. Never have I seen as many chips as it was in this one. So evidently he was taking an air haze and blowing here and blowing that stuff down there. It destroyed the elevation gear in there. It was, you couldn't even see it. When I, when I got this off of there and looked down in there, you couldn't even see that gear of so many chips. But anyways, that's where we're at now. We got all the grime off of it. And now we're in the phase of mechanically checking it out. And I've realized that a keyway is loose. Oh, I had a good view there. Now it ain't going to focus. See, there I'm actually moving. You can't see the point moving. And it's got a clunk. And the clunk does not go away when you're taking a nice heavy cut which if it's a keyway, it should auto tighten up and go away. So I'm not quite sure what that is, but we'll have a listen here. Ooh, damn it, I always do that. It's three phase, right now it's single phase. Now it's three phase. I think the belt's starting to shred too. You can see something flopping around in there. But anyways, we're going to rebuild our head, and that's what this video is for. It's not to rebuild the head. There's plenty of good videos online that show you how to rebuild the head. It's just a couple pieces I made that I'm going to use to rebuild the head. The first piece I needed was. I call it a captain. It looks like looks like a seat mount for like a captain's chair, a spinning captain's chair in a, in a van or in a boat. But it's just simply a plate that you mount on your table here with a with a uh, three quarter inch bar welded to it. And you got some gussets, and you simply just poke that to your table and run it up to the three quarter inch collet and remove your remove your head and using your Y axis to take the bolts out. Well, I didn't. I don't have enough plate to do that. I had enough plate to make the other part of this project, but not enough plate to do that also. So I, I got thinking there has to be another another way without making that boat meat, boat seat mount to get that head off of there. And of course, I thought about the 
cherry picker now. I thought it'd just be much nicer to do it with that something similar to that. So I come up with, I, I started thinking there, there's a chuck on here. Why can't I just chuck on it somehow and use the chuck? So that's what I worked into my equation and that's what I invented. I actually invented a piece that will go in place of the hard jaw. It's a J head removal tool hard jaw. <laughs> or, yeah, Bridgeport head removal jaw, we'll call it. But what I did, this is actually the second version. The first version, I used a piece of three quarter inch bar here. And I don't know what I was thinking, but I grabbed a nice piece of ground rod that I had, and then I realized that it was semi-brittle. So I had a piece of left over, and I did, I did a test and compared it to compared it to this. Which I, this should be 1018. And it broke with like two hits of the hammer. I, I cut a groove in this the same exact way as the other, and I beat on this like 10 times before it broke, so then it got, I got scared, and I was like, no. So I milled it back out. And put this in here and that's where we are now and what I did is I milled a three-quarter inch channel here and then I set actually set this down in the channel and that adds of course adds the strength of wanting to do this and it also is good to center it up because then all you had to do is clamp it and it held everything square and of course then I just welded the whole way around it So it's definitely, I don't fear this one. This, I think, is a uh, inch and an eighth diameter. Of course, this is uh, 0.950, if I remember right. And this is 940, the relief there. And then I just copied a collet. That's all this is, is a copy, exact copy of a collet. Threads, keyway and all. Keyway varies, though. It's a 156 keyway in the original collets, this is a 187 because I didn't have a cutter that small. But it doesn't matter for this because I'm not trying to keep it from slipping. I just want it to fit up in there. So anyways, this will mount in place as a hard jaw. Put my bolts in there. Of course, you see, I got spacers here too. I, that was kind of an afterthought too. I decided to put them on that way. I milled everything together. Now I got a good surface to chuck on. So not only will the bolts be holding it, it'll be chucked too. So I, I'm pretty sure you could probably pick the machine up and carry it by this now. I bet I bet you anything you could screw a eye bolt in there and just pick the machine up. So now what I'll be able to do is just I'll loosen all the bolts up. I'll loosen the chuck bolts up. I'll loosen the hit these these bolts up. And I'll loosen these bolts up. I have this down in there before I do, that way nothing can flop around. Run it all the way down in there, tighten my draw bar up, and by having everything loose, that'll allow everything to tram. It'll everything will self-center this way, this way, and then the, of course the chuck can move this way or this way. So you don't have to be dead on whenever you line it up. Once that's tight, and make sure everything's touching true, and then I'll just draw the bolt bolts up on the chuck. That gets us phase one done. Now of course, I got thinking, once I get this off of there, how am I going to hold it on my bench? What am I going to do with it? So that, and that's when I got thinking, I need to make something. So then, part two. And this is the plate steel I did have. This is what I've made. I drilled and tapped my workbench. My workbench is two, two pieces of plate steel an inch thick. Or, not an inch. Two pieces of plate steel a half inch thick, which equals an inch thick. This was an old workbench that came from being a railroad auction back in the back in the seventies. Used to belong to my uncle, and evidently somebody made this thing there. And let me tell you, they built it like a tank. <clears throat> well, the it had filled up with water. The roof leaked and the top rusted, so I had another top. So, anyways, we got lots of meat here. I used 3816 bolts because that's probably really all I needed to have, have because the mechanical advantage on this thing being held way back there is, is really good. Another reason I did it too is because I want to plug these holes up because my workbench is actually waterproof. I have it leaning back so any spills go back here and stay put 
and any screws you drop will be easy to find because you know where they go. Oh, that thing is going to roll. But anyways, if it rolled, it would head back there. When I'm done, I'll countersink it and put these in there so they set flush. So it's, once again, leak-proof. Let me give you some rough measurements of this. I could not find anybody online showing how they were securing it to the workbench. I got it at 19 and a half. This plate is 7 and a half this way, 10 this, of course it's 10 this way. I can find all kinds of people proud of their little, little uh, captain's chairs mounts showing them, but nobody showed how they how they mounted it to their workbench. So I couldn't figure out how to do it and kind of figured it out. So here it is. In case anybody wants to try to figure out how they're going to do it. Now you'll see I got shims under it. That's kind of a boo-boo. It's an intentional boo-boo though. I actually tilted it back to account for some flex and it actually went, went when I welded it even went more but that's fine. Uh, I could probably I could probably still mount the flesh, but I just put some I put had to put some washers on it because the bolts was going to run out of threads anyways. So I had to put washers on. I thought I'll just put them underneath. So I did put them underneath. Put some nuts on it too. But this is tapped. So yeah, this thing ain't going to go nowhere. The bolt hole pattern. Do a search on Bridgeport uh, head bolt hat bolt hole pattern. And you will find a print. Why does this thing look so hazy? But you'll find a print. I guess it's the lighting. Now, when you find your print, it almost it almost got me. I thought it was looking at it right like this, giving the dimensions. But it's not. It's looking at it the other way. It's looking at it from back here. If you look at your print, you'll see the handle, that handle up there for your quill, and the, the worm drive screw there is on the is on the left side, just like this picture. I originally tried measuring these bolts, then I realized these these there's not a pattern to them. They're they're everywhere. The only way to truly measure them would be to get the head off of there and measure them from the back so you can get your good bite on it with your calipers and get a good accurate measurement. That's hence why I looked the print up. But yeah, that's that's where you'll find your print. Just make sure you orient your plate right if that's the way, if you're making some more amount of, that you know, that you remember it, you're looking at it from this way. You could probably just go ahead and drill it, but once you weld it up, you have to make sure you get a point the wrong way, which is where I almost screwed up. I actually had a chamfer. I actually had a chamfer and everything ready to go and then realized it was on the wrong side. So the bottom here, actually, I only, I only was going to put a chamfer on this side for the weld because I wanted this to be flush. No chamfer here. Ended up with chamfers on both sides because I had to flip it. But if you look at this, here's your handle. So when I pull this off, It'll come around here and then bolt right to here, which you can see I've marked it. Handle out, so we're good. That'll take care of that. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hope, hope this helps somebody get ready to tear theirs apart. Sometimes you can find videos of people doing certain things, but you can't find videos of something simple like, you know, how do I hold it to my workbench? So there's my idea. If you got one you're getting ready to work on, good luck. Wish me luck, because I'm getting ready to rip that thing off here in about 10 minutes. Thanks for watching.